Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Would you be the jerk for asking your wife to shut up during labor? We'll find out, but first a story from Cameron James 222. Am I the jerk for leaving my best friend and his friends stranded in an unfamiliar city? So for background, my best friend's gotten into these Spartan races. He and a small group of his friends have started going to local ones, but recently heard about one in another state they wanted to go to and compete in, but they didn't have anywhere to stay. So they asked me if they could borrow my truck and trailer. I have a tow behind camper for the weekend. I said no, I wasn't comfortable with them taking my truck and trailer, but that I'd drive them and take the camper to their event. We made the three hour trip and set everything up in the area where the race was taking place the next day. I have a habit of leaving my keys on a hook next to the door to my bedroom and my camper. Remember this. Come nightfall, I went to take a phone call outside and ended up wandering around the grounds for over an hour. When I got back to the camper, the door was locked and I was told by my best friend's older friend through the window that there wasn't enough room for me in my trailer. So I reached for my keys to unlock the door, but realized I had left them inside the camper on the hook in my room. So I called my best friend from outside and all I was told was, sorry bro, nothing I can do. So I ended up sleeping in my truck that night, which I'd fortunately left unlocked by accident. Their race began at 8 a.m., and at 7 they came meandering out of the trailer and woke me up. No apology, by the way. So while they were in their race, I hooked my truck back up to the trailer, closed and locked everything, and waited until just after they were finished and had started walking back to the trailer. Think really wide open field. When I saw them coming, I started the truck and drove off the property, with them chasing behind. I made the three-hour trip back home, declining call after call. When I finally got home, I finally took my best friend's call. He started yelling at me saying, why would you do this? We have no way home now. I just said, sorry, you shouldn't have made me sleep in my truck after I did you this solid. He told me that there were better ways to handle this than by leaving them in an unfamiliar city with no way home. I think he ended up calling his dad to come and get them. Is he right? Was there a better way to handle this? I felt justified until he said that. I'm kind of doubting my decision now. Am I the jerk? Out of the kindness of your heart, you're willing to take your camper and give them a place to stay for the night, drive out three hours with all of them, and they're going to go and lock you out of your own trailer and say, sorry, there's not enough space here, and just try to leave you to your own devices? If your truck was locked, you would have just been totally screwed for the night? Would you guys agree with me that OP is not the jerk and totally in the right for leaving all of them stranded for pulling that stunt? Let me know if you guys agree in the comments down below. Our next story is from throwaway31367711. Am I the jerk for cutting my niece off of a college fund because of what she said about me? I'm just going to be direct and quick. I, male 35, have two sisters that I'm close with. I also have a niece, Leah. Leah is 16, and after my ex-wife decided to split up and divorce due to infertility problems that lasted for five years, I started a college fund for Leah to help her go to her chosen college. That was in 2019. Now I visit my mother's home, where my sister and Leah are living, every week to spend the weekend together. This past weekend, I was asleep upstairs while my mother, my sister, and Leah were in the kitchen. I came downstairs to grab a glass of water and heard my sister talking about my ex-wife expecting a baby with her new husband. This struck a nerve and I kind of froze from shock. I then heard Leah react to the news repeatedly saying, I told you so, I told you so then explain that she's always thought that I was the one with a problem for not being able to have a baby with my ex, but that I was too afraid to admit it due to fragile masculinity. I couldn't believe what she said, but what made it worse was her following statement about how my ex was smart to get a divorce before it was too late. I went upstairs and into the room and shut the door and stayed there for hours. Mom and sister saw me about to leave and insisted to know what the problem was. I didn't want to argue, but I told them that I heard what Leah had said about me. Leah stopped eating and got quiet. My sister tried to play dumb, but I told her I heard the entire conversation about my ex-wife and her pregnancy news. My sister tried to backpedal, saying that Leah's just a kid who doesn't know much about this stuff and was just spouting nonsense. I told them I don't want to talk about it, and they refused to let me leave, but I left eventually. I later sent my sister a text telling her about how hurt and devastated I was because of what Leah said, and told her I will no longer be responsible for funding her education. 
My sister kept trying to call, then texted saying Leah didn't mean what she said and offered to make her apologize, but I didn't feel comfortable being in the same room with someone who blamed me for something that was out of my control, and something that literally turned my life upside down. My mother tried to get me to come over so we could talk, saying Leah doesn't deserve me turning my back on her like that. I think the important thing to keep in focus here is OP had no obligation to do this college fund for them, and hearing that when literally it's something you cannot control and led to a devastating situation in your life where somebody left you because you just can't have a kid, I'm sure is understandably devastating. And I don't think OP's the jerk or should feel too bad about taking away that college fund. Because frankly, if they're going to go and say such blatant things about you like that, do they really deserve your money like that? It's one thing to try to claim that a 16 year old just doesn't get it, but she literally said it was a smart move from the ex to get a divorce before it was too late. I think that shows they more than understand the situation. Our next story is from Mermaid Dancer 04 Am I the jerk for the amount I asked to perform at a birthday party? I, 24 year old female, am a professional mermaid. It's an unusual job, I know, but I love it. I work at an aquarium putting on shows with the other mayor and also do private events to make some extra money. My friend's niece has a birthday coming up. She's turning seven, and my friend thought I'd be the ideal entertainment for the party as kids love mermaids. Also, her niece hasn't met me, so it won't break the immersion of her recognizing me. She recommended me to her brother and sister-in-law, and I met up with the three of them to go over what they wanted for the performance, how long it would last, and my rates. I told them that I would be willing to perform for two hours for 100 British pounds, which shocked them as that would be 50 pounds an hour. My friend asked me if I could cut a deal, and I explained I already was. They were matching the salary of the aquarium with this, and explained that I actually charge 150 pounds an hour for private events. They tried to negotiate me down, offering to pay 50 pounds for the two hours, stating I'd have as much food and drink as I wanted at the party. Now, after a performance, I'm usually ravenous as I don't eat much before it for obvious reasons, but food on top of 50 pounds isn't enough in my opinion. Not when I have to travel to get there and could have used this time to do an event at my normal rates. I told them that wouldn't work for me and they've told me that they need to think about it, clearly not keen on the idea. My friend's unhappy with me and asked if I could just take the 50 pounds for her sake as her niece would love it and said that as we're friends, this should come before money. I honestly feel bad about this. I thought it was a good deal and I hate upsetting my friend, but 50 pounds for a two hour performance is ridiculous. Should I just take it and mark this down as a loss for the sake of my friendship? If OP has a successful thing going on and their model is proven and they get consistent work at that rate, they know how much the performance work is worth and friend or not, OP already said that they were offering like quite a deal for the work that they do. When you're doing performance work and there's a very clear going rate that is consistent, I don't think you could ever be a jerk for knowing your value and knowing your worth and sticking to that, even with the peer pressure from the friend trying to convince them to take less. Our next story is from AITA 017 HDO. Am I the jerk for stating confidently that unless he does something worth noting around the house, he has no freaking say who or what I want around me? My husband got a dog two years ago. Originally, I said it was fine. I have no problems with dogs, never had one, but told him from day one that we would be getting proper training. He agreed, he got the dog. From the moment he got the dog until now, two years later, he has outright refused to train the dog. Refused any training from a specialist as well. I've tried training the dog myself, but I have no freaking idea what I'm doing. In the beginning, I miraculously was able to train her to not get into the garbage, listen to basic commands no sit stop go speak paw etc but within two months of that my husband basically destroyed this dog by starting to give her treats when she had done nothing as in would give her treats if he said paw even if she didn't do the trick and say good girl again despite her not doing it giving her treats when she was anxious and acting weird giving her treats for going potty etc so now she just expects treats for everything she will not do anything with a treat, or without it if I'm being honest actually. She now gets in the trash again because he gives her table scraps. All my efforts are screwed, everything I taught her is gone. She won't even lay down on command anymore and instead just crawls to you every single time. Now I'm the one who deals with all the house chores and all the cooking. 
I have an income of roughly $1,100 a month, but he works much more than I do, longer hours. So yeah, I'm in charge of basically absolutely everything at home. Well today, I had a great day. I cleaned every single room, including the kids, did all the laundry, and put all of it away, yay me, didn't leave a single dish set in the sink unwashed, even mopped all the floors. This doesn't happen often. Well, I make a bomb dinner that everyone has thirds of, and when I go to eat my portion, after the food is cold because I'm a mom and wife, the freaking dog jumps up in my lap and knocks the plate off and proceeds to eat all of it. There now wasn't enough for me to eat any dinner, so I'm pissed. This is an ongoing issue. Doesn't matter how much I try to train this dog, I literally try every single day. My husband doesn't back me on it so it goes unnoticed. So I go to the deck to get space. Well, he comes out and starts asking me what's wrong, and the dog's right behind him trotting up to me and trying to jump on me. I say very loudly to get inside to the dog and vocalize that I don't want the dog near me. My husband flips, says I'm being a freaking dink. I told him that until he starts doing something around the house that warrants not eating and worth noting, he has no freaking say who or what is around me. Am I the jerk? Now I don't know how many kids OP has, but it sounds like they've got one extra very grown kid. Because this guy sounds like he's not giving OP any kind of support. I don't think they're a jerk for acting that way or feeling that way, when it seems like literally nobody's even attempting to try to work with them. I don't know what the communication between them's been like, but there's definitely work to be done somewhere on getting through to that husband on how they need to do better. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Every single video has great stories, like our next one from CKey8145, Am I the jerk for no longer buying my stepdaughter two cats? I, 38-year-old female, my husband Adam, 40-year-old male, our daughter Amanda, 14-year-old female, and Rosalina, 17-year-old female. Amanda has about 15 different pets that are all tank or aquarium pets, and they're very well taken care of by Amanda. Amanda absolutely adores her pets. Rosalina just now just began being interested in pets, and we agreed that we would buy her two kittens if she gets her grades up, and she did. Amanda had a tournament for tennis that wouldn't be held where we lived, so we would have to travel for it for one week for the tournament and for just a small vacation. We asked Rosalina if she wanted to come, and she said no. She said since she's staying home, can she have her friends over for a sleepover, and we said yes. At first, when we thought Rosalina was going to come, we were going to get someone to watch Amanda's pets. But since Rosalina was staying home, we decided to ask her if she wanted to watch them and that we would pay her for watching them. Rosalina said yes right away for the money because she knows she's getting a lot. Amanda said she had some rules. 1. Leave them in their tanks and cage. 2. Only feed and give them water. 3. None of your friends are allowed in my room and only you are. 4. Make sure to leave my gecko's lights on at daytime. 5. Don't disturb them. 6. Check on them and more simple rules. Rosalina said yes and alright to all those rules. So when we got back a week later, we asked Rosalina if she fed and gave them water. Rosalina said yes, but in a nervous kind of voice, and her face looked nervous, so we asked again. This time she looked more suspicious and she said yes again. So we checked the cameras in her room and Amanda was livid because she never once entered the room to feed or give them water. Amanda was also more livid when she noticed that Rosalina did go in the room a couple times, but not to feed it, it was to get her friends to mess with the hamsters and turtles. We were checking in on Rosalina all week, and all week she's been saying she was feeding them. Some of Amanda's pets can't go three days without food and water, and some when we went to check on them looked hungry. Rosalina finally confessed that she hasn't been feeding them because she didn't feel like it. I got mad and said if you weren't going to do it, you should have said that when we asked because we would have hired someone else to do it. As punishment, we decided we weren't going to get her cats anymore because if she did this with Amanda's pets, then she would most likely do it with her own pets. Rosalina left to her mom's house in tears, saying we were being unfair to her. Her mom inside of the family called us major jerks. So Reddit, Am I the jerk for no longer buying my stepdaughter two cats? I think OP is definitely not the jerk in this situation. As somebody that cares a lot for animals and pets, 
Seeing this person want to commit to two cats, which is like a 15 year commitment at the minimum. A lot of cats live longer than 15 years and then turning around and not even being able to feed any pets for a week because they didn't feel like it. I'd be terrified to ever think of imagining leaving a cat with that person. And more realistically, it's going to end up being everybody else's job to take care of these cats because Rosalina probably won't because they don't feel like it. This next story is from Sexy Water Hose. Am I the jerk for making sexy poses while the neighbor kept recording me for no reason? My dad passed away recently and he left me, 26 year old male, and my sister, 31 year old female, his house. It's super unkempt, so I've been doing a lot of yard work outside in the mornings. I'm out there watering the grass in the mornings and evenings. Every single time I've done this, the neighbor right next door, who's like this older granny, comes out to her porch and straight up watches me without even hiding it. I introduced myself to her once, that me and my sister are the new owners after my dad passed, but it was obvious she didn't want to talk. Next thing, she started coming outside with her phone, pointing the camera right at me. I'm like, is there a problem? She says there's no problem as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I asked her why she's recording me then. The neighbor lady goes, what's the problem with me recording if you're not doing anything wrong? So freaking weird, I didn't even know how to respond to the situation. Soon as I finished up to go back inside, she went back to her house too. This happens every single day I'm outside watering the grass. Always the same excuse that she wants to make sure I'm not doing anything else, or if I do, it's on camera. So yesterday, I got fed up and decided to do something different. When she came out with her phone, I stuck my butt out and put my hand on my hip, looking right at her. At first she was like, what the freak? But then she got really mad when I started wetting myself with the water hose and touching my neck while literally looking directly at her. Was it stupid? Yes, but she put her phone away and started cussing me out for being a pervert. My sister told me later on that she came to the house when I was at work, talking about me sexually harassing her, making poses in provocative ways. My sister knows she's a pain in the butt, since she probably has nothing better to do with her time. But I still shouldn't have stooped to her level, making her uncomfortable right back. I feel like I'm right on this one, and it wasn't even that bad. Not like I was grabbing myself or anything. But also can be an idiot sometimes, so I don't know, you guys tell me. Was I a jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk here. I'm not gonna lie, if I'm out doing yard work every single morning, I'm gonna be pissed off having the neighbor come keep an eye on me the entire time. And not only keep an eye on me, but film me just doing yard work. Would there be like any kind of possible case for complaining to the local non-emergency number about like harassment? Like would that count as harassment? As in that neighbor recording you every single day unprovoked. Could you have some kind of complaint, you think? I'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is from Slow Hovercraft 4860 Am I the jerk for refusing to go to my sister's wedding? I, male 27, have a twin sister, female 27. For as long as I can remember, my sister and I have always been close and had each other's backs. When she came out as gay, I was the first one she told. I supported her wholeheartedly. Three years ago, I was engaged to my then-girlfriend Julie. We had met in college and became fast friends, eventually becoming a couple. I proposed to Julie and she said yes. Everything seemed fine, until I noticed that Julie had started to be a little more distant with me. Not giving me a cold shoulder or anything, but off. I asked her if she was okay. She said she's fine but would like some space for a while. I was worried but I respected her wishes and gave her space. A few weeks later, she broke up with me. I was devastated and didn't know what happened. I reached out to my sister for support, and she was there for me. She and Julie had gotten along really well, so I asked her if she knew what happened. She was hesitant, but said yes. I asked to explain, and she said it's not her place to tell me. I kept pushing, but my sister stood her ground and said that she can't say why, and Julie will tell me when and if she's ready. Well, she did. Turns out Julie was bisexual but thought it was just passing feelings. She'd never been with a girl before. She spoke to my sister about it, and my sister helped her realize her true sexuality and feelings. Her words. Julie told me it wouldn't be fair to either of us if she didn't embrace her true self, and the fact that she no longer had the same feelings for me she had before. I was stunned but eventually accepted it. We parted on good terms, even if it was awkward. 
I was heartbroken but eventually moved on. Didn't start dating or want to though for a while. Then one day, I found out Julie had started dating another girl. My sister. I was shocked and admittedly a bit angry at both of them. I had an argument with my sister. My sister swore they didn't do anything while she was with me, but Julie had admitted she had a crush on my sister. My sister liked her back, but didn't do anything because of me. She swore she didn't make Julie dump me to be with her. The sad part was, I could tell she was telling the truth. After that, my relationship with my sister wasn't as great as it used to be. I stopped talking to her as much, or visiting. Fast forward a few weeks ago, my sister comes over alone and tells me that she and Julie are engaged, and she was here to invite me to the wedding. The rest of the conversation was a blur, but after she left, I drank a lot, and after thinking about it for a few days, I told my sister I wouldn't be attending her wedding. She was heartbroken and begged me to come because she wanted me there. Even my mom called me asking me to come. I told her no. Regardless, I refused to go. I just can't stand having to be there in the crowd and see my sister marry the woman I had planned to marry. I don't know. Maybe I'm just holding a grudge. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk here, and it doesn't have to be a thing of jealousy even. I think it's understandable enough that OP doesn't show up because it's kind of a heartbreaking ordeal for them. This was somebody that they cared about, they loved, they wanted to marry. So to then get broken up with them and then imagine yourself being at your sister's wedding watching them up there marrying the person you wanted to be with, you kind of just get why they wouldn't want to be there and have to sit through that. It doesn't even have to be a jealousy thing. Our next story is from Reddit Throwaway 2670. Am I the jerk for continuing a relationship with my ex-husband's kids? When I met my now ex, he had two kids. Twins, a boy and a girl. They were about six when I married their father. Their mother was never really involved in their life. I played the role as their mom. I taught his daughter about her body. I taught my son anything I knew about being a male. We both formed a great bond. The three of us shared similar tastes in nearly everything. Fast forward to last year. Me and my husband got divorced due to him having an affair with his current fiancé. It hurt pretty badly. I loved him, I loved his kids, and I didn't want to lose that. The twins are now 22 and they've been checking up on me for a while. They visited me for the first time in a while a few weeks ago. I really enjoyed seeing them again. I thought it would be fine to keep talking with them. I got a phone call soon after. It was their father. He asked why the kids were at my house and I told them they wanted to visit me. He said we're no longer married and I'm blocking them from a relationship with their new stepmother. I said it's their choice if they want to continue our relationship with me and he got mad and hung up on me. Am I the jerk for keeping a relationship? I think OP is definitely not the jerk here. If you play a major part in raising these kids, you're just about as much as a mom to these kids as you would ever be. And even if you're not married to their father anymore, and they're not actually related to you, if they have that bond with you, there is no reason you guys can't keep having that bond. Especially considering they're 22 years old. They can choose to spend time with whoever they want. This next story is from Throw RA Not Step. Am I the jerk for forcing my son to get along with his stepfather? I have three kids. Twins, 23, male and female, Ella and Steven, and John, 17-year-old male. John was the result of me cheating on Ella and Stephen's father Rob with John's father Harry. Harry ran away after he found out I was pregnant. Rob found out about the affair three years later. The kids were still young so we didn't tell them the truth about why we divorced at the time. Rob still loved John and cared for him which surprises me considering John isn't his biological son. Harry came back into contact with me when John was 10 and although it was a little bitter, I eventually forgave him and we fell in love and got married. They didn't dislike Harry but they weren't close with him which, in John's case, hurt Harry because he's John's real father. It became bad when John was 16. Harry wanted to do something with John but John said no. Harry snapped and said that they never spend time as father and son which caused John to say, look, I don't hate you or anything but I don't see you as my dad. So stop trying to force me to see you as him. I have a dad and he's not you. I couldn't take it anymore and I asked John if he would be saying that if he knew Harry was really his father. John looked around confused and it was then I told him the truth and that his behavior was hurting Harry. 
That caused John to cry and he ran to his room. Ella went to comfort him and Stephen glared at me and said, I hope you're happy you broke that poor kid because of your butthurt feelings. It's been a year since then and I think my kids forgive me but they still aren't close with Harry. Recently it was Harry's birthday and he wanted me and John to spend it with him. John, however, decided that he wanted to watch a movie with his friend. I told him that Harry wants to spend time with him. He said that he's going anyway and that I'm free to ground him when he gets back. When John got back, I told him that his behavior towards Harry is horrible. He told me that he's nice to Harry but that Rob is his dad. I asked what the point of me telling him the truth was if he's just going to be like this. He snapped. Don't act like you told me the truth for my sake. You told me the truth out of spite and jealousy because I wouldn't see your affair partner as my dad. And to be frank, I still don't so your little plan didn't work. And he went to his room. My older kids got wind of what happened and they called to berate me and told me to stop pushing John to love Harry. I told them that I get that John loves Rob but Harry is his blood father. Ella told me I'm wrong, that Rob is the one who raised John, therefore Rob is his father. Steven said he's going to rescue his bro the minute he turns 18, which is in a few weeks. I tried to get Rob to talk to John, but he said he was enforcing his son to love Harry. I just don't understand. Am I really wrong for wanting my son to love his blood father? Am I the jerk, Reddit? I think OP is the jerk in this situation because I think they're going about this all wrong. Whether or not Harry is the blood father or not, you can't just say, well, Harry's your blood father, therefore you automatically love him. You can't force somebody to love somebody. You can't force Harry to be imprinted upon John like that. But hey, if Harry actually took time to learn John's interests, spent time doing things John loved, showed John that Harry cared for them and did what they could for them, you know, make amends for running off when OP was pregnant, maybe John would have a little bit of a different thing to say. But just trying to force it down John's throat, that's not going to work. Like, just think about it from John's perspective. If you get raised by somebody for all those years and you love that guy, which is Rob, and in John's shoes, Harry comes into the picture out of the blue and is being forced down your throat, are you just going to go, oh yeah, I love this guy. Wait, what? He's my blood father? Oh, of course I love him then. It just doesn't work like that. And our final story of the day is by the shut up labor. Am I the jerk for telling my wife to shut up during labor? First of all, I, female, was pregnant and I gave birth two days ago. Our first child was from my wife's pregnancy, female, and we decided that this time it would be me who would give birth to our daughter. My wife had a natural home and humanized birth. It was a unique but extremely terrifying moment. I was in doubt about which birth I would like to have, because I was very afraid of the natural and of the pain, labor, but my wife encouraged me and said that it was a unique moment without demeaning caesarean mothers, and that it was worth every second. So, I decided to have a natural and humanized, but hospital birth. When my water broke and I went to the hospital, out of encouragement, she didn't push or stay on top, I decided to go without anesthesia. Do you know heck? I played rock, paper, scissors and lost best of three with a devil and came back. It was a lot of pain, and the expulsion phase, oh my god. I just followed it because I hate needles and it's enough at the end. I didn't want a needle in the back. Trying to justify it, I would have had a panic attack at the beginning if I asked for anesthesia, but it would be at the beginning. But in the end, with a panic attack, it's not possible. My wife was wonderful, honestly, but due to the stress of childbirth and the pain, she was irritating me a lot, saying, go strong OP, go on, you're strong, just a little longer. And when she said, can you take a little more pushing? I just said, shut up. I'm just like this because you decorated and flowered this birth for me. I was screaming and crying. She went quiet and our daughter was born after a while. I honestly forgot I said that. It was really a moment and in a lot of pain. But I noticed she was weird with me after we went to the house. After a day of silent treatment, I asked her why she was like this and she got mad saying, don't you know? You told me to shut up at the birth of our daughter. I was so embarrassed and almost ruined the moment. I even apologized and explained that it was purely for the moment, but she's super upset with me. Am I the jerk? I'm gonna be honest, I don't think Gopi's the jerk, and just about anything you say while in the pain of giving birth, especially without anesthesia, should be definitely taken with a major grain of salt. 
I mean, you're under such pressure, such pain. You're tired, you're exhausted, you're hot, you're sweaty. Anything you say in that moment should just be forgiven and forgotten because I can imagine it would be a lot. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to see another Am I the Jerk here story that was even more insane than the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you guys all next time for some more stories.